guys, this is Brad from Dallas Geek, and I'm here today with Danielle Van. And we're here talking to you about your book, The Whiz Bang Machine. Yes. So tell me a little bit about what the uh, story is. So the first book starts with 15 year old Elizabeth Yale, and her father passes away when she's young, and she has a constant with her grandfather, but he becomes too overwhelmed and he takes off. And she has about eight years where she's just with her mother. And her, his grandpa, her grandfather comes back and all of a sudden he has a gift. And it is a haunted typewriter. And it starts spelling out secrets of their family's past. Mm -hmm. And they have to go on the ancestral search. And they go from New York all the way to Leiden, the Netherlands, trying to break the curse that's on their family. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and so, how did you come up with the uh, idea for this book? So it was a bit of a serendipitous moment for me. Um, a very close friend of mine sent me a text one morning very early of an old typewriter. She knows that I love antiques and so she just sent it to me. And um, the minute I saw it, it sparked the idea for the first book. I really thought it was just gonna be a one book deal and I was grown to what will be four books. Oh wow, yeah. very nice. So. You said this is the first book in the series. This is the first. Toonies Curse is the second. Okay. And we meet Elizabeth inside the Wisbane factory in Leiden, and it is burning down around her. Oh, wow. Okay. And they have to escape and continue to break the spell throughout the, uh, throughout the second, third, and what will end in the fourth book. Okay. So uh, when is the fourth book planning on coming out? So we just finished book three okay. and we uh, don't have yet a date, a target date yet. And my agent will let me know that soon, hopefully. <laughs> um, and I'm just about to start writing the fourth. So forthcoming for sure. Very nice. Uh, so are either of your two current books uh, out on audio format as well. They are, they're on audible.com awesome. and so you can actually get the full, you can get it in DVD or MP3 or the download for audible.com. Very nice. You had, uh, you were telling me a little bit ago that your background is in uh, investigative reporting. Yes. And now you are doing uh, fiction writing. Uh, what was the transition from a uh, clear presence nonfiction to fiction like for you? You know, um, it was easy, but I think that was because my target has always been to be an author and to always write. That's why I got into news to begin with. Um, I do have a nonfiction book as well. And so I love to kind of jump between the genres, even though they make me really stay in YA. Sure. Um, but it, it just, it was easy. It was a natural flow for me because regardless if it's nonfiction or it's fiction, the base is you're a storyteller. Okay. That was nice. And actually, uh, jumping on what you just said, uh, your books are young adults. Yes. Um, was that a conscious decision on your uh, part to say, I want to write for this audience, or did that just happen to work out how the story uh, focused? It was how the story focused. Okay. Um, I, I had thought about a few years ago that I would do that at some point, and I have a book that we're about to revisit that's young adult. And, you know, when it was a growing genre as it is now, I kind of thought, well, you know, that'd be a great place. It was, you know, it's a growing genre. Sure. Um, it, but it wasn't intentional. It was just sort of, where does this fall? And as this developed, um, it just happened that way. But my, my youngest reader has been eight. My um, oldest was 92. So, wow, we kind of span it. <laughs> I don't recommend, you know, I don't sure. recommend that for everybody. <laughs> but nice. it just, it sort of happened that way. Very nice. Yeah. Has there been a particular poll for you for uh, this series of where you get your inspiration from each book from? So I am a big nerd when it comes to history. I mean, okay. major, major dork. <laughs> and I love history. So what I intentionally did was I brought in history from different locations. So New York and the Netherlands and other areas. And I wrapped them into my fiction. Yeah. And so I was purposeful in the way that I did that. And some of the things kind of, like I said earlier, serendipity, where I would pull an event and it would kind of feed itself into something else. And so it's just sort of what's happened and then switching it over to the fiction part. Okay. So uh, it does sound like your books have a very specific protagonist, a yeah. singular protagonist. Yeah. Would that be correct? Um, her grandfather kind of gets a little in there too. and. I've been hit by, well, grandfathers don't act that way, you know? 
And that's why I love him is because he is so not perfect. And um, I really, really wanted to have characters that were flawed and real and make you hate them and make you love them. And so when I show up to my writing table, that's what I bring. Very nice. You were saying that the idea of the haunted typewriter came from your love of antiques. Yes. And uh, the history that's brought into each book uh, was your interest in the history of all the different areas you wanted to include in the books. Yes. Um, so for the upcoming third book, yes. is there anything specific that you can uh, preview for our viewers that they can look forward to from either of those aspects? Yeah, so we continue the theme all the way through. Um, book three, you are really emotionally invested in the relationship between Elizabeth and her grandfather. It's, it becomes very dry and um, you really see Elizabeth grow. You know, we've, we've seen her grow from 15 to 16, now she's about to be 17 and really trying to find a place on her own and she's grown with all of these things so you're rooting for her and at the same time you're hating her because we're in that kind of angst time too yeah. so that's what you should expect very nice um and of course you said that you just finished the third I did. you're getting ready for the fourth yes is the fourth your intended conclusion of the series or is that kind of up in the air it may be up in the air. It really depends on what I'm told. <laughs> you know, there, there was some conversation is do, do we take it to five or not? And um, for me, I love this series. I love writing it. I keep coming back to it. But I also know that there, there are so many other things out there for me to write to. So um, right now, it is where I see it finishing. Um, but we'll see what happens when it comes down from New York. <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, and have uh, your books gotten any kind of uh, public recognition yes. or uh, any kind of uh, particular praise that you uh, were very proud of? Yes, so book one and two have a collective total of 17 writing awards. Wow. Um, book one was on the long list for this year's Blue Bonnet list. So nice. um, it was one of those things that's not why I began to write, um, but seeing it and and experiencing it has been overwhelming to me. Just, um, you know, when you have a dream of doing something and somebody comes and says, you know what you want to write, it's, uh, it's amazing. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, okay, well, if our viewers wanted to be able to find your books yeah. to be able to pick up for themselves, where can they find them? Well, at all major bookstores, but also if you go to my website, okay. Danielle A. Van, and it's B A N N dot com. You can find all the information about where I'm going to be, your book signings, where to buy books, Audible, all of it. it's all right there. Awesome. Well, if you want to be able to check out her books, the links are going to be down in the description below. So be sure to absolutely go check them out and uh, be on the lookout for the release of her third book. Yes. Uh, is it going to be this year sometime? We're Probably. hoping so. If not, it'll be early next year and okay. it's going to be The Whiz Bang Machine Royal Deception. Awesome. Well, definitely be sure to check that out. So until next time, this is Brad from Dawes Geek saying, see ya.